Today's video is about the senseless death of a young pianist. While indulging in a round of Russian roulette backstage at Houston City Auditorium on Christmas Day of 1954, this horrible incident tends to overshadow his relatively brief but illustrious recording career. This musician's gentle, plaintive vocal balladry deserves reverence on its own merit. The centerpiece of today's video is all about Johnny Ace. Now before we start, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out any more content. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. John Alexander was born in Memphis, Tennessee to Leslie Newsom and preacher John Marshall Alexander. During his teen years, Alexander dropped out of high school to join the United States Navy. Alexander supposedly spent a large portion of his duty a wall. After he was discharged, Alexander joined Adolf Duncan's band as a pianist playing around Beale Street in Memphis. The group of regional artists, which included B.B. King, Bobby Bland, Junior Parker, Earl Forrest and Roscoe Gordon came to be known as the Bill Streeters. Initially, they weren't an official band, but at times there was a leader and they played on each other's records. Alexander and other Bill Streeters recorded records for Ike Turner's label in 1951 after Turner, a talent scout and producer for Modern Records, made the arrangements. Alexander accompanied King on broadcast on WDIA in Memphis and performed piano on a few of King's songs. So Bland left the group and King moved for Los Angeles. Alexander took over Bland's vocal responsibilities in King's WDIA radio show. Although Alexander's younger brother St. Clair, Alexander asserted that the singer came up with the name Ace when Mattis changed his first name. David James Mattis, the founder of Duke Records and program director at WDIA, claimed to have given Alexander the stage name of Johnny Ace. Ace signed to Duke in 1952 and released his first recording. My Song, an urban heart ballad which topped the R&B chart for nine weeks beginning in September. We'll be together for each He began heavy touring often with Willie Mae Big Mama Thornton. In the next two years, Ace had eight hits in a row, including Cross My Heart. Never be free. Be Please forgive me. I have always loved you so. The clock. Got nothing but time to step out. But time. Yes, baby. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, yes, baby. I love you, baby. You know. He's saving my love for you. We'll be together. And never let me go. I find. In November 1954, Ace ranked number 16 on the Billboard 1954 disc jockey poll for R&B favorite artists. In December 1954, he was named the most programmed artist of 1954, according to the results of a national poll of disc jockeys conducted by the U.S. Trade Weekly Cash Box. Ace's recordings sold very well during those times. Early in 1955, Duke Records announced that three of his 1954 recordings, along with Thornton's Hound Dog, had sold more than 1,750,000 copies. Johnny Ace met Lois John Palmer, who was a freshman at Booker T. Washington High School in 1949. His parents were unaware they were dating until she became pregnant. Ace and Palmer married on July 17, 1950, when she was 16 and he was 21, and their son, Glenn Alexander, was born later that year. Ace relocated Palmer to his parents' home in Memphis. Ace was barred from the home for playing blues music, so he mostly took residence at the Mitchell Hotel owned by Sunbeam Mitchell in Memphis. He had another kid with his wife, a daughter named Janet Alexander, 
but the couple was rarely together due to his womanizing and he allegedly abandoned his family in 1953. He also had another son, Larry Saunders, who became a singer. Ace is also the biological grandfather of the singer Ladisi. After touring for a year, Ace had been performing at the City Auditorium in Houston, Texas on Christmas Day 1954. During a break between sets, he was playing with a 32 caliber revolver. Members of Ace's band said he did this often, sometimes shooting at roadside signs from their car. It was widely reported that Ace unalived himself while playing Russian roulette. However, Thornton's bass player, Curtis Tillman, who witnessed the event said, I will tell you exactly what happened. Johnny Ace had been drinking and he had this little pistol. He was waving around the table and someone said, be careful with that thing. And he said, it's okay. Guns not loaded. See and pointed it at himself with a smile on his face and bang said, Big Mama ran out of the dressing room yelling, Johnny Ace just killed himself. Big Mama Thornton said in a written statement, which is also included in the book, The Late Great Johnny Ace. That Ace had been playing with the weapon, but not playing Russian roulette. According to Thornton, Ace pointed the weapon at his girlfriend and another woman who were sitting nearby but did not fire. He then pointed the weapon toward himself, bragging that he knew which chamber was loaded. The weapon went off, striking him in the side of the head. According to his biographer Nick Tosh's, Ace shot himself with a 32 pistol, not a 22, and it happened little more than an hour after he had bought a new 1955 Oldsmobile. At the time of Ace's death, he was only 25 years old. Ace's funeral was held on January 2nd, 1955 at Claiborne Temple AME Church in Memphis. It was attended by an estimated 5,000 people. Ace had one more hit pledge in my love was a posthumous R&B number one hit for 10 weeks beginning February 12, 1955. Rock and roll historian Harry Hepcat noted that Johnny Ace was a crooner who sounded like Johnny Mathis was sold. Soon after the death of Johnny Ace, Verita Dillard recorded, Johnny has gone. For Savoy Records in early 1955, she incorporated many of Ace's song titles in the lyrics. This was the first of the many teen tragedy records that were to follow in the later 50s and early 1960s in addition to Dillard's Johnny Has Gone. At least four other tribute records to Ace were released in 1955. Frankie Irvin's Johnny Ace's Last Letter, The Rover Salute to Johnny Ace, Linda Hayes Why Johnny Why, and The Five Wings Johnny Still Singing. Now, before we go, I have a question for you all. What was your favorite song by Johnny Ace?